another guest with me today. This is my husband, Eric, and he is the State Extension Specialist in the Entomology and Plant Pathology Department here at OSU. Thanks for joining me today, Eric. Thanks for having me, Kim. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your position? Sure. As you mentioned, I'm the State Extension Specialist here. Uh, my specialty is insects that infest um, ornamental plants as well as turf grass. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm responsible basically being the State Extension Specialist. I uh, disseminate educational materials around the state for citizens of Oklahoma, uh, for industry folks such as nurseries and greenhouses, uh, working with area uh, specialists around the state, mm -hmm. as well as county extension educators. Excellent. Now, how can homeowners access the uh, materials made available through the extension service? Well, uh, we have a number of bulletins, um, fact sheets, as well as current reports where we keep uh, people up to date on new products or new pest problems that might be emerging in the landscape. Um, those can be available or found online uh, through uh, OSU website um, and through the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service website as well. Okay. And now there's also extension offices in each county, is that right? Yes, there is. And so you can um, contact your local county extension educator uh, if you need any further assistance. If they can't answer it, they can go to the area specialist or to myself here as a state specialist for any of those problems. And of course, we also do lots of workshops and various programming around the state uh, to, to work with master gardeners or to get educational materials out to the citizens at large. Wonderful. Well, as long as we have Eric today, I thought I'd get him to help me with a pest problem that I noticed on campus. Uh, you may have seen these rather odd looking clumps of sticks or leaves. This is a bagworm case. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about the bagworm? Sure, Kim. The bagworm itself is actually a caterpillar, so it's a, it's a moth caterpillar, and it constructs these cases using silk that it produces with its mandibles. It takes the uh, foliage or fruits in this case that's, mm -hmm. uh, and twigs that's, um, that it's feeding upon or, or being associated with and constructs these cases and lives within them. Mm -hmm. um, about this time of year, uh, the males will begin to emerge. Um, these are tiny black moths with clear wings. They'll seek out the females, which actually never emerge as, as moths as we typically know them as. The females actually stay as caterpillars, even as adults. The males will seek them out inside their bags, mate with them, mm -hmm. and the females will then lay her eggs, and those eggs will remain dormant and overwinter until the following spring when those larvae will, mm -hmm. will emerge and, and begin feeding on new material. Okay, and now the eggs stay inside of the bagworm. You can see here we have a uh, a light infestation of bagworms. You want to talk a little bit about some of the damage that you see here? Sure. Well, if you uh, contrast the damage that's being done from the feeding, you can see some of the tips are missing on, on this Fitzer juniper uh, compared to some of the material behind it that hasn't had any uh, um, bagworms feeding upon it yet. Uh, you can kind of see where this is uh, defoliation, typical defoliation damage that occurs from bagworms, which infests things like junipers and your cedars and your arborvitae, mm -hmm. um, as well as some deciduous trees. Okay. Now, how can we manage uh, an infestation of bagworms? Well, a small infestation like this can very easily be uh, managed by hand removing. Mm -hmm. So you can pluck them and remove them right from the foliage or from your plants in the landscape. Okay. And you can also use um, some homeowner products that are available over the counter. Uh, things such as spin uh, spinosad products like the Fertilome Borer Bagworm and uh, ten, uh, tent caterpillar sprays. Uh, you can also use BT products. The active ingredient there is Bacillus, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacterium that um, has activity against these, uh, these insects and other caterpillar insects, uh, pests, uh, as well as um, causing minimal damage to natural enemies in the landscape that also might be feeding upon these things in the landscape. So those now, two are fairly safe fairly products. Fairly safe products and, and common to, to be used. Mm -hmm. You can also um, as I mentioned, hand remove these, but you want to be careful not to just leave them laying around because the eggs are still viable inside that case. So you want to make sure you destroy them somehow. Okay. Now, we have a heavier infestation here, and it seems rather impractical to hand remove all these. We could try spraying them with the spinosad or the BT. Um, what are some of our other options, especially on large trees that might be infested? Sure, absolutely. It's very difficult, obviously, for those large infestations to be uh, maintained and controlled by hand plucking, for instance. Mm -hmm. You can't climb trees. I don't condone that for anybody to get to the tip tops of the trees to do that. So you'll probably want to do, in the case of a very heavy infestation or a very large landscape tree that's um, experiencing problems with bagworms, you want to hire a certified arborist and make sure they're certified or um, contact your, your local um, landscaper, uh, landscape management company 
um, to come and take care of those trees. They'll spray either any of those products that you mentioned, the, the BT or the spinosad, or more conventional insecticides um, to, to get at the upper reaches of those trees where it's hard for a homeowner to get at. Okay, well thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully we'll have you back again on Oklahoma Gardening. Thank <laughs> you.